Did you come back to me or did you not come back to me? Was everyone around you doing something even and you did something good? I'm trying to see how much time I have to know if I can go into this next point. I'm going to try. The Quran has, for example, If you say to them, Follow that which comes from God. Some people will say, and think that we are not like these people, We'll only follow that which our fathers did before us. Because it's our culture. I don't want to go against my culture. You come with your religion. I want to stay firm with what my dad did before me. But the verse is, Do not think in this, in this situation. Your parents, the Quran says, knew nothing. Quran says this, Your dad didn't know a single thing. And he wasn't guided. And still you follow him. Why? Just because he's your father. Just by the association. It's not enough. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In the Quran, Aba'aha la yaqlu. They don't know anything and still they follow their culture just because their fathers did something. And because my dad did something, I don't want to let go of that practice. Same thing with mothers. Just because someone is a mother or a mother figure to you doesn't mean she represents all goodness for you. I'll give you one example. Obvious example from Tariq, but you've got to be a little bit careful. Sharif Radhi mentions this point in Nahj Balagha when he compiles it. After a khutbah from Ali Islam at Jamal, he adds this point where he says, One of the companions of the Imam narrates that I was at the Battle of Jamal. Okay, I'm not going to go into Jamal because we all know what happened. At Jamal, the man says, I saw a strange thing. There was a man lying on the ground who had been wounded nearly fatally by the enemy. He fought for who? For um, those who fought against Ali alayhi salam. Okay. The man says, I went near him and I whispered because I could hear him saying something. What was he saying? The man was whispering the following words. Our mother took us towards the path of death. And all of us who followed have drunk it. Okay. The man says to him, now is not time for this poetry. Now it's time for kalma. Say, you're going to die. The person on the ground replies, no. I'm not going to give up patience in my last possible time and give in to Tawheed. You can tell who fought against Ali because they didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The man says, okay, fine, up to you. Okay. The companion starts walking away. As he's walking away, the wounded man says, come back, I want to tell you something. Man says, okay, what is it? Come towards me. The man blows his head down and the man who's wounded, the narration says, bites his ear. The man with bitten ear says, why have you done this to me? He's about to walk away thinking the man's about to die, I leave him. And the man says, do you know why I bit you? I want you to tell everyone that you have just seen Umair al-Dabbi and he is the one who was taken to death by his mother. Question to all of you, can a mother do an evil deed? Yes, she can. Can a father do an evil deed? Quran mentions it itself. Our true origin is not necessarily our immediate mother and father. Our true origin, going back, back, back is who? Ali wa Fatima, Salu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Our true origin. This is the point I want to bring to all of you. This point right now. Our true origin. You know that person who's looking for belonging that I don't know where I find my safety, where I belong, where I feel at home. There's a narration where the Imam say that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Ahl al Bayt. He took their nur from the arsh of Allah. It could mean many things. Allah have different interpretations. One is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his arsh took some material from there and created from it the soul of Ali Muhammad. Hadith says, whatever was left from Ali Muhammad, from that light Allah created the heart of every lover of the Ahl al-Bayt. Origin of insan is from where? From Arsh of Allah, but from Ahl al Bayt. So our sixth Imam then says in this narration, now do you know why you love us so naturally? Do you know why you love us so easily? Because of this narration he said, because you have been created from what we have been created from. And then he says, we are to you like kind fathers. We know what is khair for you and you only want what's khair for us. We are fathers to you. Now come to Amr Islam. Similar narration, Imam says, who's an Imam? 
an Imam, he says, is someone who fulfills the hukuk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person who treats you kinder than your own father treats you. That's an Imam. Aimma are not just someone who's separate to your life. They are in many ways your true identity. Give you one more point. Imam Mushtaba alayhi salam says this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad. He says, in Jannah, there is a river called Behisht. That river is more sweet than honey, more soft than butter, and more cool than ice. He says, from that river, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the clay from that river and from it created us Ahl al-Bayt and all those who love us Ali Muhammad. Then he says, there's not a single person who loves us who's not made from this same substance. Which substance? From where we come from. What is a parent if not the origin of their children? Going back to the beginning, skip all of those immediate preparatory causes. My mom and dad, their mom and dad, their mom and dad. Hatta skip Adam. There's a direct link from Ali Muhammad until us. They are functioning the way a parent functions for their child. That's our origin. So you know that feeling that only gets filled in the majlis or when you go for ziyarat or when you hear Fadal of Ali. It's that feeling of home and safety because that's where you came from. That's your origin. So every time we sin, we forgot who was watching us, our own parents. This is haqiqat of sin, forgetting. Nansiya, why? Because did you not have a mother like Ummi Abiha who's been watching you your whole life? And still I had the jurra to commit a sin while she's watching me. This is our mother, our true mother, the mother of all of the mothers before us. A mother's quality is to give you gifts even when you don't deserve. Mothers give gifts to their children, they treat their children. The hadith tell us there'll come a day when Zahra Islam will give shafa'a for all those who are deserving of it. Did we deserve shafa'a? No, but we pray we are in that group. What kind of mother can give you a better gift than shafa'a on the day of Mahshar? A mother, when she's in pain, thinks of her children. This is the quality of a mother we see all around us. When a mother's in pain, thinks of her children. Okay, now come to Sayyid Fatima alayhi salam. When she's told by the Prophet what will happen to your son, she starts crying. That he'll be killed alone and thirsty. When the Prophet says, but there will be a qawm of people who will come together and mourn for him. Does the narration not say that she stops crying when she hears this? Literally, Azadar, this, Majalis, when she hears that there are some people who will mourn for my son, she stops crying. Ya'ni, her true children are those people who give her peace in her mind. That my Hussein will have my other children to mourn for them. I'll give you one more example. A mother does not walk in front of her children. She doesn't walk in front of her children. Okay, Hadith says that when all of those who go to Jannah are going towards Jannah, the first who will walk first is Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam. But then she will stop, the riwayat says. And she will say, I will not enter Jannah until all those who mourn for Abu Abdullah enter first. This is the behavior of a mother. She thinks of us when she's in pain. She gives gifts to us we don't deserve. And she won't walk ahead of us into Jannah. Inside all of us, there is actually yatimi. You are yatim. Why are you crying on Fatimiyah more than when your mother died? Why? Why when you come to the majlis, do you feel more at home here than your own home in the days of Muharram? Why? Because inside of you, a father of yours was killed on Ashura. A father of yours is now buried in Baqi, multiple fathers who you can't go and access now. They're not separate to us, they are literally your own family. And here's how great they are. When they see that we are Yatim, they give us themselves as parents. Last point I'll make to all of you. The example of Father Abbas Let's Think of this example for a moment. All his life, he's told he's a Yatim. And he actually behaves like this. Why does he never call Abba Abdullah brother? Always Akhi, never Mawla, ne uh, ne oh, oh, never Akhi, always Mawla, master, never brother. Because in his mind, he thinks he is something separate to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. He's at least one level less. I can't call him brother, he's my Mawla. Okay. Why is Umul Banin saying to him, they are the daughters of Zahra, but you are my daughter, you are my son, you are not the daughter of Zahra? Why is she saying this? 
Why is there that narration attributed where it says that you are the sons of Zahra and the son of Ali? You are the eyes, I am the hands, and it's the role of the hands to protect the eyes. All his life, he sees himself as Yatim and they have a mother. They have parents and he is separate. Okay. He lives his life as a ghulam, as a servant to Abba Abdullah, walking in behind him, following every command of his. I'm not from the same parents as you, Ya Imam. But after his death, the Imam say that our mother Zahra considers Abbas from herself. All his life, he thinks he's separate. After his death, Zahra herself says he's from my son. Imagine. When Al Ummat finds any of us, they find us like we are Yateem. And they give us themselves as belonging. And the one safety you have is them. All his life he thinks he is something less. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi. May my mother and father be sacrificed for you. This is not a normal thing to be said about anyone who is Ghair Imam. And Abbas gets it. Because in his being an orphan, he finds a being himself, he finds a mother in Zahra. One last narration about this. Aitha Shubayri Zanjani discusses the same point I'm mentioning to all of you. That you find purpose in recognizing you are an orphan of Ahl al-Bayt. The narration is the following. On the day of judgment, when everyone is going towards the maqam of Shafa'at, where we are seeking intercession, they say that Amir al will be asked, Ya Ali, what about the Shafa'at of those who came through you? Hadith says, he then asks Zahra السلام, that she is the one who will bring Shafa'at for all of those who come with them. The narration says, then she'll be asked, Ya Fatima, what thing do you bring to show and give in response to which you receive all of the intercession which you've given? The narration says, she'll say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. She's answering, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Kafana li ajl hadha al maqam al yadan al maqtu'atan min abni al Abbas. It's enough for me on this day to give the two severed hands of my son Abbas for all of the intercession of those who follow me. Kafani, it's enough. Abni Abbas, my son Abbas, not Ali's son Abbas, not the Ghulam Abbas, my son Abbas. And all of those who will seek Shafa'at will go through this two arms of Abbas as the thing Zahra gives for the sake of Shafa'at. Ask yourself, how merciful is this family? They find a young man, a boy in Abbas when his father is killed, who spends his life thinking he's a one who's Ghulam of Imam Hussein. And in the end, Hussein's mother calls him my son. So I end with these words to all of you. Or every individual who sees in themselves, there is something missing. Something is not complete in me. I haven't found my home yet, my safety, the place where I belong. That thing, I will call it for you. It is the act of being yateen. And it's in all of you. And the day of Ashura is when you're reminded that you are yateen. But the same one who was taken from us comes and says, we are your fathers, we are your mothers, we are the ones from whom you came. And we will bring you shifaat on the day of judgment. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Al yadan al maqtu'atan. Those two arms which were cut. These two arms of Abbas are enough on the day of judgment for all of us to seek shifaat. Why these two arms? Well, maybe it's because these arms belong to a man who was a man of wafadari, a man of true loyalty. That his whole life he is waiting to fight and when he is told no, not once he complains about who told him no. Not a single moment of weakness of Iman in this man. But he keeps going to Abba Abdullah saying, please let me fight and let me fight. And the answer is the same, Ya Abdul Abbas, you are the commander of this army. You are the commander. How can I watch the commander go and fight? There will be no one left to support me. At one point, Abbas is narrated to have said, Ya Abu Fadl, Ya Abu Abdullah. Here is Ali Akbar, here is Qasim, here is On, here is Muhammad. There is Habib and Nafi and Burair. Where is the army left for which I am the commander? Which army is left? There is just you and me left in this camp. But still, he's not given ajaza. So they say when he hears that noise of al atash, al atash, only then he's given ajaza. That you won't 
let me fight for you for the sake of fighting the enemy. But your daughters are thirsty. How thirsty? One of them's tongue has become dry. One of them is placing stones on her stomach out of thirst and hunger. One of them is digging the sand for cool sand because the earth is too hot for her to bear her thirst. I can't bear this noise of Al-Atash, Al-Atash. For the sake of that noise, let me go and fight. So he gets his ajaza. Abbas alayhi salam. Which Abbas? Shujat, Shaji Abbas. Riding on a horse and he's so tall, his legs are dragging on the ground of that horse. Rise towards the battlefield. This is what's so strange about Abbas. Even though he's not fighting, no one can attack him while he's riding his horse towards the Furat. Why? This is the son of Haydar while he's riding. The same blood of Ali runs in him. No one can get him. So when he fights through everyone and comes to Furat, this same Abbas looks down at this water and thinks to himself Ya nafs ba'd al How can I drink water? How can I drink? How is this water here cool when everyone is thirsty behind? There is so much iman in this one act of Abbas. Which act? While he's looking he doesn't drink. What does he do? He throws the water down gets back on his horse gathers the mushk and rides away. One eye, what eye is looking towards Abba Abdullah. Abbas starts riding as he's riding Sakina is watching. A few days ago, I heard the narration. Which narration? They say Sakina is sitting on the shoulders of Zainab watching an alam coming towards her. Sometimes left, sometimes right. But the alam doesn't fall until one time comes when Abbas is rising towards her. One enemy comes behind from a tree and cuts the right arm of Abbas. The alam falls to the ground. Sakina says, where is my uncle Abbas? I can't see him. But an alam comes back. Why? Abbas takes that same alam in his other arm. He keeps coming. He keeps coming. But then what happens? One enemy cuts off the left arm of Abbas. The other falls again. Still Sakina is watching. Where is my uncle Abbas? He keeps coming. Abbas will not stop. Why? Now they say he takes the mushk and in his teeth he holds this mushk. Abbas does not give up. The only time Abbas stops, not when his left arm is cut, not when his right arm is cut, not when he receives arrows. When? They say when one arrow hits the mushk of Sakina, the water spills in front of him. Abbas stops now and thinks to himself, how can I go back if I promise water for the one who says Al-Atash, Al-Atash. So the narration says Abbas stops then. Now when he stops, they say to him these words, which words, now attack him. For the son of Haydar has no arms left. There is one wound, another wound. The Maqtal says one enemy comes from behind and takes a lance. You know what a lance is? A thick iron rod from behind. They hit the head of Abbas. Abbas falls forward. As he falls, he goes to the ground. Azadar, when you fall, you have two arms to protect you. But Abbas has no left. Abbas has no right, so when he falls, there's no arms to hold his fall. Now ask yourself, if a man falls, he has arms to protect himself. Abbas has no arms. But what about the man who has an arrow inside his eye? How does that man fall to the ground and protect himself? The narration says, one alim says, when Abbas falls, he lifts his knees and crouches by his horse to try and pull the arrow from his eye. In this state, they say Abu Fatima Hussain Islam is rushing towards him saying, Abbas, Abbas, where are you? Hear this Akhir word. When Imam Al Islam comes near him, what does he see? It's like Qayamat in front of him. The son of Haidar lying on the ground, no left, no right. His arms covered in blood, his face covered in blood, and an arrow in his eye. Hussein rushes towards him, takes his head, puts his head in his lap, and says, Abbas, you called me. I have arrived now. Abbas says, Forgive me, for there is no water for your daughters. Then they say, what do they say? While they're lying there, Abba Abdullah says, Ya Abbas, I have one request from you. What request? All your life you called me Mawla. For once call me brother. Then they say, for the first time, either now or before, Abbas says, you are my Akhi in this world. Ya Abba Abdullah. But then Abbas says, Abba Abdullah, I have one request from you. Which request? When I was born, the first face I saw was your face, Ya Abba Abdullah. The first Nurani face when I opened my eyes was your face. But Ya Abba Abdullah, I am going towards my death. But there is one arrow in one eye and blood in the other eye. Forgive 
save me. I would wipe it myself, but I have no hands left to wipe my face. So please wipe my face for me. Those so they say, Rasulullah wipes his face and he sees him one last time, and then and there Abbas is shaheed. Okay, now Rasulullah must somehow go back to the camp saying there is no Abbas and there is no water. And when Sakina sees one poet says she would have said, I don't want water. Just give me my uncle Abbas at this time. I'll mention to you one more word. Last year I had the honor of reciting Majalis in the Sardab of Al Abbas alayhi salam in the basement. They say in the basement behind there is the actual Qabr of Abbas alayhi salam. Many years earlier, one scholar goes to the Qabr and sees the actual grave hidden behind under the dhari. All of you have been to Karbala, think of that dhari. He says, when I saw the grave, I wondered to myself, Abbas was so tall. Abbas, when he would ride a horse, his legs would touch the ground. Abbas had this much shuja'at and this much jalal. He was a large person. But when I saw his Qabr, I thought to myself, is a young child buried here? For the Qabr is so small. Then Alim says, do you know why the Qabr of Abbas is so small? Why? They say, they say when Abbas was on his horse and the enemy came behind and with Allah he hit his head, someone said, this is the son of Ali. All those who want to revenge strike him. So one person hits him with his sword. One person cuts one limb. One person cuts another. By the time Abbas falls, there is body is in so many pieces. The Qabr of Abbas is the size of the Qabr of a small child. Inna lillahi wa inna lihi raji'oon rina wa qalahi wa tasinun bi amrin Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah For the sake of this Abbas, let all of those shuhada in our lifetime be examples for us to be shaheed, Ya Allah Ya Allah, all those people right now who are wishing that from this majority onwards let my hands commit acts of beauty and not disgrace Allah, the haqq the arms of Abbas, let our arms be source of pride for Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam And finally all those people who have disputes with their parents, disagreements, they don't speak. For the sake of our true origin, allow us to forgive our parents and heal inside, Ya Allah. Allahumma nasaluka bi haqqi Fatimata wa biha ba'li ya baniha wa sallu musta'udu fiha an tusalli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. محمد حضرات آپ کے پیش نظر تھے جناب فرشوری صاحب جنہوں نے آقا بالفضل عباس کا قمر بنی حاشم علیہ السلام کا مسائب بیان فرمایا میں ہوں عباس جری حیدر صفدر کی تلاش میں ہوں عباس جری حیدر صفدر کی تلاش حامل راز خدا مرض یہ داور کی تلاش حاملِ رازِ خدا مرضِ داور کی تلاش جستجو کی ہے میری اہلِ وفا نے برسو مجھ کو ڈھونڈا ہے نسیری کے خدا نے برسو مجھ کو ڈھونڈا ہے نسیری کے خدا نے برسو اور اسی کے ساتھ میں گزارش کروں گا جناب زیغم صاحب سے کہ وہ ممبر پہ آئے اور سلام پیش فرمائیں بر محمد والے محمد صلوات اللہم صلی علیہ محمد وعالی محمد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سلوات بواز بلند پڑی اللہ کل جو صاحبان موجود تھے وہ گفتگو سے آشنا ہوں گے کہ کل ہم نے کہاں پہ چھوڑا تھا ابن علی حضرت عباس علیہ السلام لشکر یزیدی کی طرف چلے لشکر یزیدی کی طرف چلے چلتے چلتے وہاں پہ آ گئے جہاں پہ دس لاکھ کا لشکر کھڑا تھا لشکر کے اتنا قریب آ گئے کہ عباس کے گھوڑے کے کان کی کنوتی ابن سعید کے گھوڑے کی کان کنوتی سے جا ملی جب اتنا پاس آ گئے حالت کیا ہے دس لاکھ کا سار جھکا ہوا ہے عباس کا سار اٹھا ہوا ہے دس لاکھ کے چہرے پہ پریشانی ہے عباس کے چہرے پہ حیبت ہے عباس 